In this video, I want to talk about how to use the binomial approximation to the hypergeometric distribution. And um, so let's go ahead and read through this example. So a town has 1,500 residents. One fourth of the residents support building a solar power plant. 15 residents are randomly selected. Find the probability that at least five support building the solar power plant. Okay, so um, what we have going on here, we have 15 people being selected from this town. Um, so our small n, our sample size is 15, but our big n, the town, is the 1500. Okay, so because there's selection without replacement, um, meaning we, we wouldn't want to select, if Bob was selected, uh, we wouldn't put him back into the pool and give him the possibility of being selected again, right? We would select 15 unique people, so we have selection without replacement from the population, okay? And there is a, it's two options, either you support the uh, solar power plant or you don't support the solar power, power plant. Um, one fourth of the people uh, don't or one fourth of the people do support the power plant. So what is one fourth of fifteen hundred? Um, Three hundred and seventy-five. Okay. In other words, uh, fifteen hundred divided by four. All right. So. Uh, this is a hypergeometric distribution because you have sampling without replacement. You have uh, two options, either you support building the power plant or you don't support building the power plant. Now, notice how small this sample size is compared to the population. All right, so when the sample size compared to the population, in other words, if you divide the sample size um, by the population size, okay, and if you get a number that is smaller than a uh, rough rule of thumb is if it's smaller than 0 0.05, then you can use the um, binomial approximation to the hypergeometric. Okay, so in this case it's 0 0.01, which is smaller than 0 0.05, that's just a rule of thumb number, so we can use the binomial approximation okay and the reason why you would want to use the binomial approximation is because if you're doing combinations that involve huge numbers such as 1500 um, this can blow up a calculator really fast now if you're using Excel or a more advanced ca um, calculator then you could you could probably just calculate this using the hypergeometric distribution but the binomial approximation just it, it just helps in the um, in the calculation, okay? So now if we are gonna use the binomial approximation, so this was the information that you would need for the hypergeometric. If we're gonna use the binomial approximation, you need N and P, okay? Remember N is your sample size, that's gonna be the same, and P is the probability of success, or the probability that someone supports building the power plant. So in this case, that's one-fourth the residents support building the power plants. This would be 0.25. All right. So X now is X in either case. It's going to be um, the number of um, people or residents um, that support solar out of... 15 selected. Okay, so we're, what we're trying to do now is calculate the probability that x is at least 5. Alright, so x could be 0 people support it, 1 person supports it, 2, 3, all the way up to 15 people, all 15 out of 15 support it. What we want to make sure is that at least 5 people support the power plant, solar power plant. So that would be greater than or equal to 5. All right, so um, greater than or equal to five, that means I could start calculating the probability that x equals five, add that to the probability that x equals six, add that to the probability that x equals seven, you get the idea, all the way up until I'm adding it to the probability x equals eight, or sorry, not eight, 15. 
So that would take a long time, right, to calculate all these individual probabilities. Um, the easier thing to do is to use the binomial table, which it um, is a table for the um, uh, CDF, right, or the cumulative distribution function. And so the binomial table will tell us not greater than, but it'll tell us the less than or equal to probability. So let's try to flip this around to it's a less than. So this would be one minus the probability x is less than five. Oops, less than five. All right, so that means if I were to do total probability zero to 15 adds up to one. So one minus the values of x that are less than five, this, this, this is the complement, right? Of greater than or equal to one minus less than five. Now remember CDFs are less than or equal to. So I need to change this to something being less than or equal to. Less than five in a discrete case is the same thing as less than or equal to four, only for discrete random variables, okay? So for discrete random variables, we have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, okay? These are all the different possible values x can take. And less than five, sorry, let's start with greater than or equal to five. Greater than or equal to five would be all of these guys. So less than five is this down here, which is the same thing as less than or equal to four, all right? Only for the discrete case can you break this, that the, you can say that these two things are the same. Less than five is the same thing as less than or equal to four for discrete random variables only. All right, and the reason why you do this is because now you'd recognize, okay, less than or equal to four, this is the CDF for the binomial. Okay, and we have a table for the CDF for the binomial distribution. So let's pull out that table. All right, so P is 0.25. Um, n is 15. Right now, we're looking for the CDF value at 4, so 0.6865, okay? 0.6865, all right? Then you can do 1 minus that, and you get your answer, 0.3135. Okay, so the probability that at least five out of the 15 randomly selected residents support the solar power plant is 0.3135.